Mass for December 26th. Hello again. We'd like to welcome you to Emmanuel Church of the Deaf in Rochester, New York. I am Father Ray Fleming, and I am the deacon, Pat Graybill. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, yes. You may have noticed we are wearing a different color today, white, which means today we are celebrating the Holy Family. That is the first Sunday after Christmas. Holy Family Day. Sometimes I think we believe Jesus' family with Mary and Joseph that they had it easy. No. They face challenges just like we face challenges. But we ask them to inspire us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Our Mass of the Holy Family begins as we notice that our family is God's gift to us and the challenges we face with our family lead us to everything God wants for us. Lord, you don't prevent us from persevering. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you love us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you want us to love one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and grant us everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family. Graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity, and so in the joy of your house delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The First Reading A reading from the first book of Samuel In those days, Hannah conceived, and at the end of her term bore a son, whom she called Samuel, since she had asked the Lord for him. The next time, her husband Elkanah was going up with the rest of his household. to offer the customary sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vows. Hannah did not go, explaining to her husband 
once the child is weaned, I will take him to appear before the Lord, and to remain there forever. I will offer him as a perpetual Nazarite. Once Samuel was weaned, Hannah brought him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and presented him at the temple of the Lord in Shiloh. After the boy's father had sacrificed the young bull, Hannah, his mother, approached Eli and said, Pardon, my lord, as you live, my lord. I am the woman who stood near you here, praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord granted my request. Now I, in turn, give him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. Hannah left Samuel there. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. Happy they who dwell in your house. Continually they praise you. Happy the men whose strength you are. Their hearts are set upon the pilgrimage. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. O Lord of hosts, hear our prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. O God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. The Second Reading A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we may be called the children of God. And so we are The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him.
for we shall see him as he is. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from Him whatever we ask. Because we keep His commandments and do what pleases Him. And His commandment is this, we should believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the Spirit He gave us. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Join me. Alleluia, Alleluia. Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Each year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the, pe the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to festival custom. After they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it thinking that he was in the caravan they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances but not finding him they returned to Jerusalem to look for him after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you 
with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So earlier, Father Ray said, Today, we celebrate the Holy Family. That tradition of the Church is to celebrate the Holy Family after Christmas. When I was growing up, you know, I had my family. But the Holy Family, what does that mean? Well, that's what I'll discuss with you today. Father Ray explained that the Holy Family, they were not without problems. We have seen the stories of Mary's concern, searching for her son. You know, when he was just a teenager. Many of you parents that have your own teens can empathize. Every family has problems. And good times. Both. They happen together. It's all part of the package. So Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, they had bad times and good times as well. Now holy, that does not mean perfect. It means that God is involved. He has entered their lives. They turn to God and ask, What do you want, God? Sometimes, you know, it's hard to be patient, and I want an answer to my prayers now. But patience is part of his plan. It's better than my plan. And better than yours as well. So Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, the Holy Family. Holy means God is in them, encouraging them to teach what God wants. Remember when God informed Mary that she would have his child? Did she blindly accept and think this was normal? No, she was confused. She had concerns. She would have a baby without a man? But her plan was to get married. How was that was her plan? How would that work? But God interrupted Mary, and she understood. God has a better plan. God's son would be born of Mary when she was quite young, 14, 15 years old. She would be pregnant. She felt humbled. And she honored and reverently obeyed. Yes, God, whatever you want, God. Mary was holy. 
Now Joseph, when he saw Mary was pregnant, he started to consider divorcing her. But then in a dream, an angel came and interrupted him and let him know this is what God wants. You should still marry her. And it wasn't quite clear, and he didn't fully understand, but Joseph went ahead and married her. Joseph was holy. That is what the holy family is. From then on, the holy family Was their life smooth and without problems? No, problems arose. Their life had its ups and downs. But they remained full of trust in God. That is the challenge for us. Our readings were about that about what it means to be holy. In the first reading, Hannah, she can't have a baby. But God's plan for the other wife is to have the children. You know, it was acceptable back then. And it was easy for the other wife to become pregnant, but not Hannah. So she prayed on it and told God, should she become pregnant, she would offer up her baby to him in service for all of his life. And it worked. God listened. And he answered by Hannah becoming pregnant. She gave birth to Samuel and offered him in service to the temple in Eli. Where he grew up and he became a prophet. So this is another holy family connected to God. That's what family is. In the second reading, we have a beautiful example of God. Our Father loving us. God accepts all of us to become his children. We are all holy in connection to God and connected to each other. Yes. In the gospel, Jesus was a, almost a teen, 12 years old. And he went with his family to the temple each year to celebrate Passover. But in his heart, he felt he was called to the temple to work, to sit with the teachers. and to ask questions of all of them, and to learn. Clearly, he was curious. But at the same time, when the teachers asked questions of him, he had answers for them. And they saw that he was wise. He was wise like an old man, wiser than any other his age. But Mary and Joseph, they were concerned. They had been searching for him. They had, and when Jesus saw them, he asked, why were they looking for them? Don't you know I'm supposed to be in my father's house? He was wise. But Mary and Joseph, they didn't understand. They were new to this, to these new ideas. But we're raising you. And you have your own personality. 
you are becoming your own person. But Mary, she accepted that this was God's plan. You know, she had asked, what does God want? What is God's plan? Mary always accepted God. She didn't rebel or resist. She was humble. Now in the Bible, it doesn't really talk about what happens to Joseph. We don't know. But we know Mary and Jesus, they remained as followers of God. And Jesus returned home with Mary in time for her to grow old. So much later in their life. And he was very wise. And the others were pleased with him. And now he saw it was their turn for all of us. Now, yes, the world does tend to be messy. I mean, think about it. We have COVID. We have political problems. The weather has been strange. Places that have been upturned by the recent tornado. Just very strange times. But the readings, they help us to see. We can learn from Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. We can turn to God and trust in Him fully, no matter if we understand God's plan for us. The Bible is full of stories of people that were confused and then finally see the light when they have received the gospel. Jesus was forced to leave Bethlehem and then years later go back home. The people were doubtful. They were concerned. They were human. Jesus was crucified and died on the cross. And then on the third day, you know what happened. That story shows how God's love helps us when we have patience. So going forward, this allows us to accept that Mary, Joseph, and Jesus are the example of what God will bring us. Don't you agree? Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. First, for our church, celebrating the Holy Family in heaven, the same as our families here on earth. Our Holy Family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. The world is messy, so help us live in the world, connected to God and each other. We pray the world may regain its health as God is in each of us and improves us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. We pray for those suffering through the world's messes. Those without a home, exiled from their country, searching for a new home. We 
for those that strive to find cures for our illnesses, that work to aid us in our health despite the world's mess. that our trust in God will help us to follow his plan to a better path. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For those that we know are sick, the diseases that continue to arise, like COVID, Omicron, and the other variants, that we all may remain healthy through our trust in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. We pray for all of our families that they may find peace, support, and comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayers. For those that have died, now especially during this Christmas holiday, you know, the perfect time to gather family and celebrate that those that have died may find comfort in God's hands and that he shines his light on their family and friends that are now heartbroken and grieving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. Lord God, tonight we make our vow that before, at the start of winter on December 21st, and concluding our longest night, help us to always have hope in your light shining down on us. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation. 
humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. It is right to give thanks to the Lord. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory is shown upon the eyes of our making, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he first took the bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper had ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Now we proclaim the mystery of our faith. 
when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all those who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the way that our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory now and forever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all and with your spirit. Christ's peace is here. Share that peace with one another. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
This is for those of you who cannot receive communion for various reasons. This prayer is to allow for Jesus to enter your hearts. Join me in this prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go now with peace in your heart and joy that you have been chosen, that you have chosen us to be part of your holy family forever. Thanks be to God.